absent that, the whole idea of the context of Planet X as it was originated and is mostly, um, most completely embodied by um, the Zeta Talk thing, uh, that has never come out of the disinfo bin in our space code plugs. Now, what about Nibiru? In other words, are you having problem with, with the choice of language no, no. here? No, 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 because we've got it modeled on all the various different uh, parameters, all the way going back to Sitchin and everything, and besides which he was a very poor linguist and mostly did a lot of bad translations on some stuff. Um, but in the best representation of that kind of a model is um, um, a couple of the scientists out there, Paul Lovellette, who are working on the Electric Universe um, model, et cetera, and their concept is how these small little uh, intrusions are going to act. So, no, I, I'm, I'm sorry, but we don't, we don't show Planet X. Um, we also show all kinds of things that are current in uh, pop culture as falling in that bin where we don't have an emotional archetype that supports them outside of the disinfo category. Okay, that and when you say you don't have an emotional archetype uh, right. that supports it, uh, is it possible that you there's a reason why you wouldn't have a, an emotional sure. archetype? Sure. There, there are some artifacts within our processing that could certainly occur. I question, uh, we have these debates internally, and I question sometimes whether, for instance, we would be able to accurately predict a meteor that would come on in and impact the planet, because it's so far out in left field, so to speak, that uh, humans wouldn't necessarily be cognizant of it. However, if we're working on the alternate view of reality, that we're all interconnected in a common mind, and our minds are impacted by every other mind, et cetera, et cetera, in a giant network, then I don't see how anything in reality could occur that could not communicate to that mind. So the fact that I don't particularly have it modeled shouldn't matter that much because it should reveal itself in the language, and I should have to root around and discover what that is. Just for instance, if I did not have terrorism modeled, and the word showed up that said military accident money center um, within 85 days of uh, on the middle of July. And it turned out to be, of course, the attack on the WTC and 9-11. And I didn't have terrorism model. OK, but I would, I would counter that by saying, because it wasn't perpetrated by terrorists. Oh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Everybody applied the label of terrorism to it. So the fact that people are applying the label of Nibiru or Planet X or whatever, um, is that it's applying to an underlying context that should show up if, in fact, there were some emotive basis in the fear. In other words, we got a context again, one I had not modeled, electric-driven water. And if I'd been smart, I would have said force-driven water. Hmm, what kind of force could drive a water? And then it would have dawned on me a tsunami. I never even thought about it. I went the other way. I thought, ooh, electricity, storm, giant storm, hurricane that hit him. As a, at the same time as the earthquake. Well, I was wrong about that. Electric-driven water was pretty straightforward, but we did not have any emotional quantifiers attached to the word tsunami in our lexicon. Okay, now I see you reference hyperdimensional physics, though, um, rather Correct. repeatedly in, in your uh, documents here. And I think that's really interesting. And so are you, are you able to talk about things like how that impacts um, what's going happening to us as we move into the galactic center and what's going on with, for example, the face on Mars, um, the pyramids, 19.5, things that Hoagland talks about, for example. Sure, and, and actually that developed because uh, a few years back I started noticing that the entities were shifting around and we had to do some things like, we had this big entity that we called Bush Co., which was the amalgamation of the Bush, Bush administration and the corporatocracy, and, and it severed, and it came into the Bushistas and then in, into in markets, etc. So the data changes on us enough to force us to look at things. And a few years back we started getting all this unknown energy from space business. We didn't really have a bin to throw it in. It was tucked into the Terra entity, or sometimes it would show up in the global pop or the America pop subsection, uh, subset science, uh, subset government, et cetera, et cetera. And we'd get all these uh, repeated bits of information that appeared like they all wanted to go together. So we decided, okay, let's create a bin, and we called it the space code part. And because it was going to be that area that we'd hold all of our unknown and officially denied um, space-based, but also interdimensional, also, you know, basically hyperdimensional and all of this kind of stuff. It, as that data set, as that entity has grown over time and pulled in more and more sets of data on its own, it's forced us to examine this kind of stuff and, in, and to follow some of these rather intriguing subjects like hyperdimensionality. Now, I have to say that 
I'm aware of all of those that study electricity since way back when. I knew about the electric model before even getting into the work I'm in now, and, I, and I'm also an, an aficionado of what Mr. Solder's work in the good through synergetics. So a lot of the stuff that is being expressed at the level of the hyperdimensional physics has been out there in various different places on our, on our planet in various different formats, and you could have gone out and picked up little bits and pieces here and there. What's interesting is how many people have done just that and are putting them all together. And, and then we have to ask ourselves, why are they being motivated to do it now? Well, probably because we need to know about it now. Okay, and then one last question. I'll let you go because I know this has is, is gotten quite long. Um, oh, I'm fine. We, we can chat all night. I've got really? Coffee. Okay. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of talk about going from the third to the fourth to the fifth dimension, the, the actual Earth itself, as a result of the transformations that are happening on the planet. Um, have you been getting information about that? We may be. Uh, I have to be somewhat vague because, again, it's an issue of do we have it modeled correctly. In our space ghost parts energy, or sub, uh, uh, entity, we have a subset called uh, unknown, and within that we have uh, another subset called energy, and then it splits off into these various different areas. There appears to be a whole lot of um, uh, information about extra energy coming in from space the data sets might be reflecting major changes at levels that might go down to what we call the ESR, or the electron spin resonance. So who knows what that's going to cause. The, would humans be able to adequately project the result of something like the change in the electron spin resonance level uh, across the whole of the solar system as we get into some of these energetic areas? in a way that we could meaningfully pick up. I don't know. We might be getting some hints that there's some huge changes along that level coming up as the popping into the fourth dimensity, fourth density or something. We don't have any words specifically towards that, other than we're picking up some of those uh, that are coming from those people that are promulgating that idea out there. We're not picking up any of the archetypes that uh, I would suspect should arise. doesn't mean that we won't. We're just not at this moment. Okay, because, um, for example, it seems to me that maybe an archetype symbol would be the spiral. Yeah, but that's all tied up into the idea of the eschaton and the singularity and so on. It'd be awful hard to, to um, uh, separate that from uh, those previous contexts and, uh, and apply it. We do see all, we do see mass kinds of changes coming in in various different levels that are affecting the data at, um, Un at unexpected places, and they're pointing to things like, as I say, the pineal gland, and, and in the coming report we're going to write about fluoride, because there's going to be a huge um, uh, emotional wave building in 2009 about the damage that was done to people as a result of fluoride and its interaction with the pineal gland. And a lot of people are going to be very, very, very upset because they will feel that something has been stolen from them. And I think that what they're going to be feeling is that the potential or, or uh, ca capacity for um, a better expression of humanity is going to have been stolen from them once they know certain information. Wow. Okay. Well, I'm, thank you, Cliff. This has been really fascinating, and I'm sure that we could go on all night, but I'm, I'm going to let you go here. Cliff, thank you so much for sharing so much with us. It's been, uh, this has been very, very interesting. Sure. Yeah. Anytime. And you know, like I say, bona fortuna to us all. You know, good luck to us all. We got some hard times coming, so everybody needs to, you know, get strong to go along. Okay. Um, well, this has been great, and we would love to check back in with you. Um, hopefully, after no, you know, October sometime, maybe in um, late October or even November. Sure. Sure. Okay. All right. Take care, and thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Bye. 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 This has been Project Camelot, and this is Carrie Cassidy and Bill Ryan. It's Friday, September 26, 2008. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.